Oh, hi GameStop. My name's Nick Harper. I'm the creative director on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And today I'm going to give you a talk of behind the scenes of the game. The story is actually based on the movie that's coming out at the same time as the game. Donatello, because of the, the big stick that he has, he can do all of the long range moves. Raphael is really like a cockroach and aggressive. Leonardo is much more disciplined and skillful and uh, ninja-like. Michelangelo is much more kind of a skateboarder kid. So he's really sort of flamboyant like Bruce Lee. I'm okay. You have to build uh, this thing called Family Bond, which is about being a true ninja. By doing good combos and beating the bad guys up well, I grow my Family Bond, which makes my other brothers respect me. The more skillful I am when I do these specific moves, uh, the more Family Bond I build up. And because of that, I'm then they're available to tag in and out, and I can do co-op moves with them. The main thing for sure is capturing that feeling of uh, being part of the Ninja Turtle family. We have all these collaborative moves uh, where you work as a team and you can throw your brothers around using collaborative throws and combat. And we're really trying to make the player feel that working like that as a team is the way to win the game. In terms of combat, my favorite by far is Michelangelo. The direction we gave for him really was he's this um, really, really skilled character, but kind of lazy like a teenager would be. So naturally he's brilliant at fighting, but he kind of can't be bothered and he's always showing off. So I think we've really captured that well. I guess my, my third favorite thing that I would talk about is what we call the flow. It's this rhythm that you get when you're moving. If you're playing like a true ninja, you're, you're on, constantly on the move and you're jumping and leaping and running along walls and sliding and, and flipping along poles and all these things. So that's what you need to aim for, true ninjas. Hi GameStop, uh, I'm going to introduce you to Wayne who is an illustrator on the game and he's working on the storyboards for our uh, mission sequencing. Wayne does these storyboards based on the script that our script writers have written. This is after uh, Leo saves this village from some uh, banditos and they're cheering like, yeah Leo, you're the ghost of the forest. And this is his, his dramatic exit. And then Stefan over here will take the sketches and turn it into a much more visually impressive sequence. So if we go and speak with Stefan, he can show us how that works. Yeah, I put like in a viewport background the uh, image of a storyboard. Then once the pose is rendered, I take it in. It's a composite of the 3D turtles. Christian wanted to keep the sketchy intention at first that we have. And those transitions are sort of keeping that intention of, of sketchness. So it takes you really from mission one to mission two through this comic book way. Um, and then the last frame is the first frame of the next mission. So it will be pretty seamless. And then when you play it, it'll just feel really cool. Like you're almost playing an interactive comic book. This is really how the animators work. They move bones around. It's very, very fine detail movement to create uh, the subtleties really. They're doing stuff that you never thought would be possible with animation. It's really, really cool. GameStop, this is Jonathan Simar. He is the technical director of animation. Well, I'm working right now on Mike's move. It's not finished yet, but it's getting somewhere, I think. The Mike is like the over the top guy, so he's got the weirder moves. And now we have Leonardo. We have a team of animators that have been doing this. I've just been supervising to make sure that everything looks good and works for the gameplay. So, Raph has this move in the game, Righteous Fury. It's kind of the ultimate killer move that he does after he's charged up his rage. He's like... And then the whole screen's gonna kind of white out like... A nuclear explosion, and then at the end you kind of see him, he's like... Like that, you know? You get it? Marvellous. Hi again, GameStop. So I'm going to introduce you to some programmers who are working on some cool stuff for the game. This is Simon and JP. What we're, we're seeing right now is the first boss fight we're going to uh, develop for the game. We're going to start with the boss doing almost nothing and then showing you how changes we do in code are going to translate in, into gameplay. So right now he's bashing the wall, he's pretty angry, but once you, you get near to him, there, he stays idle and nothing pretty much happens. So next thing is probably to add some kind of uh, animation or what are we going to add? I think he's not that aggressive right now, we should maybe try to put you on 
in the ground. So we're going to add a net attack to, uh, to the big foot. Yeah, let's add that. So what we're doing in, uh, in, in script is actually controlling which animation is going to, to play on the big foot. This is actually how the, the AI programmer are working on this project. We're uh, working directly in the editor writing script and the script affect what you're seeing uh, on screen. Let's combine that and try it. Oh, here comes the attack. Hi GameStop, uh, what I'm going to talk to you about now is how the levels are made in the game. The level designer will go and build a really, really basic map and we play that first and we get a good feel for does it feel right, is the flow working, am I doing the moves that I want to be doing, am I teaching the player in the right order and so on. And then the level artists will take that blocky map and with the level designer discuss how they can turn those bricks and blocks into something that looks much more visually pleasing. On one of the maps that we have, the turtles ride along a train and at the end of the track, uh, the big monster has smashed through the environment and caused another train along that track to crash. What Tina's working on is kind of the crash debris. Also, it guides the player where they need to go. The monster would have punched his way through the environment, so you'll see this kind of cutout shape. Kind of a shape so that the, the, the player, the kids, really see that. Oh, there's the outline of the monster, that's where I need to go because you're chasing this monster through the environment. What we're going to show you now is how lighting is put in the environment. So you can see all these green blobs are basically lights. Each light is manipulated in terms of its position and its color. It's a really, really skilled job. Technically, I don't really understand it, to be perfectly honest. I just see the end result and decide whether it's making me feel happy or sad or angry or whatever it is that I'm feeling, and I'll comment on that. When the artist takes a lot of effort because the light actually is what adds the mood to the game. So thanks for stopping by GameStop, it's been great talking to you, I hope you like what you've seen, I hope you've seen a bit of the background about how we make the game and I hope you're as excited as we are about the product.